Hi there. If this is your first time listening, this podcast is rated for those aged 18 and older, as we do cover mature topics on occasion and swear often. So if you shouldn't handle these topics, click the fuck off right now. And, uh... All you motherfuckers still here? Enjoy the show. Uh, how are we, uh, how are we picking up, though, by the way? Oh, um... Are you able to hear all of us? Are you able to hear all of us lovely and stuff like that? Uh, the bars are showing that. It is picking us all up just fine. So well, good. I'm glad to hear that. It is makes me very happy. Yes, yes, yes. Welcome, everyone, to, uh, the Chaotically Queer podcast. Hmm. Quite a bit of a, um, a different tone to start off the podcast, I'll admit. Dang, dang, did she actually get <laughs> Yes. Yes. First we're gonna we're we're gonna we're gonna take out some titanium white. <laughs> what? Uh what? <laughs> it's That's a it. Bob Ross reference. Hello? Oh yeah, you're right. There, yeah. there. I am it's just so like... fucking out of it. Look, look, you gotta understand, yesterday was pure absolute insanity, so I am just out of it today, no lie. And, Inanimate or animate? And look, I will. Uh, and pretty, look, pretty, my, pretty animate this time. My excuse okay. is it's eight a.m. over here. It is eight a.m. over here. I'm recording this. Fuck it is the first thing I am doing today. Mm-hmm. Fair. No, like it's still um, a Bob Ross reference. Mm-hmm. But no, no, I. I it was a crazy goddamn day yesterday. Ah, uh, jeez. Oh yeah, with the Mike Polk stuff. Yeah, I was there for the space for the uh, space where he was talking and justifying. Oh his God, I'm only idiocy. barely, I'm only tangentially aware that that happened. Oh, I don't know. So oh to kind of give a short, to kind of give a I short have, version, so that this aware. doesn't turn, so that this doesn't turn into a fucking drama video. Um, basically, <laughs> twenty words they, or less. He said things that were problematic. Did a space where people were riding his dick. Someone came in and presented the facts about the whole Palestine issue, and mm-hmm. he ran away. That is the. <laughs> well, to be fair, it's not like it's the first time he's said things like that. He's kind of been on Twitter in the past and said stuff like that. I must have missed it the first time because this this was kind of surprising to s- this was surprising to see. But I have to say, b- actually being in that space and seeing the uh, individual completely just presenting the facts not even being insulting or disrespectful just presenting him with what's going on and how this looks for him right, only right. for him to run away was the funniest shit so yeah it's kind of fucked honestly yeah <clears throat> it's fucked but i it was amusing at the time but then i'm looking back and i was like oh shit that entire situation was just jesus <sighs> wild Support Palestine, everyone. Yeah, support Palestine. Yeah. Oh, fuck. That's just all <laughs> I can say in a situation like that. It's just fucking hell. I'm yeah, I, I'm only barely aware of Mike Pollock. I'm as a Sonic fan for the better part of my life, I'm unfortunately all too aware of Mike Pollock. Fair. Uh, well, Fair. I'm just. Made... I'm just saying. Like of of everyone here, the reason why I'm so like why I'm not be why I'm not reacting as intensely as I probably should is because I have no nostalgia wrapped up in this. Well, if I can make a slight joke about it, um, it kind of only Please. makes sense. It kind of only makes sense that the person who voices Doctor Eggman is also a villain in real life. Yeah. Um, my only snarky comment to make is, well, Dean Bristow was always my favorite Eggman anyway, so... Wait, which one was that? Uh, the guy who voiced him in Adventure, Adventure 2, and Heroes, Dean oh, Bristow. Oh, yeah, like, definitely best Eggman. Yeah, yeah, no. It's between, him and the guy from, it's between him and the one from the OVA. Can't remember his name. Uh, Edwin Neal, I believe his name was. How the fuck do you know this? You have to understand that voice actor, voice acting and voice actors is kind of a niche thing that I have knowledge of. And one of the earliest examples of me getting extensive knowledge of voice actors in different shit was the Sonic the Hedgehog franchise, so... Jazzy? 
I hate to inform you, but you're both wrong. <laughs> what? Who, okay, who's the best Eggman then? Snap Cube Eggman. Oh, Alfred Coleman? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Jazzy, I think we need to have a talk here. Look, look, I let I I just know who voice act. Okay, go ahead. Ask me who the voice of someone was in something, and maybe I won't know this one. Go ahead. Who was Creeb's voice actress in Sonic Heroes? Rachel something. I don't remember the last name. <laughs> I just I just remember. I think she was the same actress who played to call in Adventure One, if I remember correctly. I could be wrong. Uh if you're right about that, then. Let me see. Let me see. I'm looking it up. <laughs> I, I went to bring up my, my internet browser, uh, but you're already on it, so I'm just going to leave that to you. All right. Cream the rabbit. BTVA, cream the rabbit. Uh, All hell BTVA. Mm -hmm. uh, I got to scroll like down. Okay, it wasn't someone named Rachel. The actress's name is Rebecca, Rebecca Honig. So, no, wait, no, that's the four kids' voice. Wait, I'm still wrong. Dang it. Uh, <laughs> uh, did, 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 okay, no. Oh, no, I was terribly wrong. The actress's name was uh, Sarah Wolfick, and she did not voice to call. So there you go. Okay. I got something wrong on this subject that I said I had knowledge. Okay. You asked the one where I'm... Okay, but Jazzy, the fact that you were able to name all those goddamn Eggman voices just by us mentioning what game they were in. <clears throat> look, look, Eggman's like one With of my us. favorite char Eggman's like one of my favorite characters, so of course I know who voices Jazzy, him I'm getting to Jazzy, I'm getting to a point here. <laughs> you Okay, you go get to that point then. This is not neurotypical behavior. I hope you're aware about that. <clears throat> I am fully aware of that. <laughs> like, look, I've never been officially like in terms of neurodivergence. I am. I know for a fact I'm ADHD. I've never been diagnosed with autism, though. If if a doctor, t if someone who specialized in that told me I was autistic, I would not be surprised to okay. find out. Like okay. it would it would have no impact on me. <laughs> like, <laughs> OK, Missy, you know how you were. We talked about this in private, but uh, no, eh? you're wrong. <laughs> You're wrong. Jazzy is fully aware about the fact that they're probably neurodivergent. I accept being wrong. I I accept being wrong. Wait, wait, you got y'all talk about me? Yes. We talk about you because we love you. Oh. No, like, yeah, no, I'm full like no, I'm aware I'm somewhere on neurodi the neurodivergence deal. Like like I said, I'm I was diagnosed ADHD and I believe if I'm not mistaken that is flavors of neurodivergence. <laughs> yeah, that is one of the many flavors. And like I said, if I found a, if I went to a doctor person who told me it, to to, fig to figure out if I had autism and they just said definitely yes, I would not at all be the least bit surprised. Just cause. all a doctor would have to would have to say is tell me about what you're interested in. Well, I I found out a lot of people who are autistic really like trains, and I really like trains. I also kind of have to tell you this, Jazzy. The, Trains and dinosaurs, I find. The Venn, oh, the, I love dinosaurs. The yeah. fucking um, Venn diagram between Sonic fans and autistics is a circle. I'm not too surprised. Like, that, I, I, I'm... That, that is I'm, meant I'm as an aware. endearing and naughty derogatory. Yes. No, not at all. Like, it's... Uh, <laughs> and keep in mind, I have, like... I, like, I... And then, of course, you have my GameCube hyper obsession that lasts to this very day, so... <laughs> I don't know if that factors into it, into any of this at all, but... Having hyper I was a PlayStation kid. Is definitely a part of that. Mm -hmm. I have played every. I've played games on every single PlayStation console. Damn, so have I. Same. No. Were we all PlayStation kids? Hang on. Yeah. I so so here's the interesting situation I was in as a kid. Um, my parents okay. divorced at a pretty young age. Okay. Um, and so I, I was I would often split time between my mom's place and my dad's place. My oh. mom, we had a GameCube, and at my dad, we had a PS2, so... Okay. It was, it was kind of half and mm. half, like Nintendo Kid and PlayStation Kid, so... Got it. When was yeah. the first time either of you played Kingdom Hearts, then? Um, 2005. 
five. 2000, 2002 or three, somewhere around the time the first game came out in America. We got it as a okay. Christmas present. We got it as a Christmas present, actually, with the PS2. So. so we all played Kingdom Hearts for the first time around the same time. Yeah, yeah, because that would that would have been around at the time I was turning 10 at the time. And my dad had bought us like a, P- a used PS2 off of eBay during that time. Hmm. Ebay is a great friend to have for retro gaming, I swear. So Very much so, yes. It, you just say eBay is a great friend to have. eBay in, like... Okay, I lost the thought. eBay is good. Yeah. eBay, eBay has been good for a very long time. Yeah, yeah no, like... I just kind of... I just wish that if I was trying to find, like, used games or DVDs or manga on it, if people didn't price gouge on it, but also pr- fucking people are going to price gouge regardless, because if they put OOP in the title, yeah. it, that immediately thinks they can double up the price. <laughs> yeah, it, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta shop savvy. Like, I, like, yeah. I, be, I, I try to, like bookmark certain sellers that i see that actually have some good stuff like just today i um bookmarked a seller that not only sold gamecube games but some of them are in pretty cool custom cases that i like like they had the um i found them through because i even though i prefer the dreamcast version i wanted to find this for the sake of the collection um i wanted to find the sa1 director's cut for gamecube and this person okay. sell, and this person sells it and the custom case makes it look close it's a gamecube version of the design used for the dreamcast release of the game and i've always preferred that design as far as sa1 cover art goes so yeah i will always prefer the dreamcast cover over like the weirdly cgi version that they used for the fucking director's cut yeah no so just to, just the fact that i can have a gamecube variant of that cover is art to me so uh yeah Nice. Hmm. So I believe we watched a movie um for this we did. podcast. Yes, we did. You ever you ever watch a movie when you're a kid and then you come back over ten years later with an understanding of what it's actually about and it becomes possibly your favorite movie or at the very least top three. Yeah. Was that Kiki for you? That was absolutely Kiki for me. I have not... uh, It's been over... Now I need to think of how old I am. Um, We've talked about this a lot on the podcast. You're both at least like... I think you're both the same uh, age. You're 28? uh, Yes. Okay, yeah. So we are the same age, so... I think I'm maybe a month older than you. Okay. <laughs> Meanwhile, here I am at like one year younger than both of you. <laughs> yeah. Uh, either way, it's been close to 20 years since I saw Kiki for the first time. Holy shit. <laughs> Meanwhile, I watch it so much, but... This was my first time watching a specific version of it, which we'll get into in a bit, I'm sure. Mm-hmm. I, I'm i sure we'll get into it because I have things about, uh, I have things to say about the things that you have to say about it. Yes, mm-hmm. and I can't wait for this because I have similar <laughs> <laughs> I'm don't, sure we all don't have Don't pipe me up. I'm just going to disappoint in front of everyone now. Missy, we I all have, have your, opinions. Missy, we have talked about this. I am I am so excited for you to talk about this. But uh, all right, but yes, we have but, seen. But, but we watched we Kiki's started, delivery service uh, last weekend. But before we actually get into ago. those like discussion points, can we all agree at least on one thing? Yeah. Top of the list. Yes. No. <laughs> what? I prefer Castle in the Sky. Sorry. <laughs> Heretic. <laughs> Look. Here's the thing. Wild Here's the thing. Me. Here's the thing. Castle in the Sky has a lot of nostalgia value to me in almost 
because I didn't watch Kiki until years after Castle. I I saw Castle in the that sky. is that okay. So. That is super fair and valid. Yeah, that's if fair. I watch this. If I was someone who keep in mind, I didn't watch this till like mid to late high school. I think I didn't watch okay. Kiki until then. Um, and I have a feeling that if I did watch it as a child, maybe elementary and middle school, I would have a stronger attachment to it. Um. That said, though, I do like Kiki a little bit more and more the more I see it. So, though, it's hard to say where I stood after this particular viewing because we'll get to it. Okay. But I, I will say, now, it's not at the top, but for me personally, it's just under the top, which is still the... good, <laughs> which is still very good. In this yes. episode of the Chaotically Queer Podcast, Jazzy fucking fights everybody, apparently. In this episode of the Chaotically Queer Podcast, we put the chaos in chaotic. <laughs> look, look, I'm the one. Look, if one of us was going to have hot takes during this marathon, it was going to be me. Let's be Absolutely, real. Absolutely, yes. It was oh, the person who the person who talks about movies all the time, having hot takes about a movie. I cannot believe what I'm hearing. So, I generally prefer Castle in the Sky just because I like the fantasy adventure feel of it, and I thought the character I thought the characters were a bit more interesting. That being said, Kiki is still top tier. I still really enjoy it. I think I there's a lot of moments that really stand out to me and still stick in my head like no matter how many times I see it and I'm still wowed by F fucking love the film uh, I can I can give like my top five films and Kiki is like right up there in it um but you know it's funny though because I'm actually at a point where I'm actually debating with myself if I actually like Castle in the Sky more because it's one of those things where is like the, the more, more you dig your heels in the more you dig your heels into the dirt the more you're evaluating right in a, right it's in one in of those vacuum, things where, what you're defending yeah when I think about like more which one I enjoy watching more I'd probably say Castle in the Sky just because I really dig the '80s vibe it has going on. That's and fair. especially and especially um after discovering the version with the reorchestrated soundtrack, I fucking adore that movie so goddamn much now, like mm. even more than I already did. So yeah, when it comes to eighties vibe, I think you you you're, you're it, it does not surprise me at all that you very much go for the eighties fantasy. Uh, my eighties vibe is Tron. Fair, um, and yeah, fantasy is more my thing. I'm always that's more what I'm into, and I think that's why Castle in the Sky. I say more just on general taste is more my thing. Like, mm. but I think if we're talking critically objectively, then yes, there is a strong case to be made in favor of Kiki's delivery service. Um, I really resonate a lot. I do like, and I do resonate a lot with this movie and this struggle to find, I feel like Kiki's struggle with like trying to figure out who she is and what she wants to do is something that's resonant across not only for younger viewers and teenagers, but also to adults. I think this is yes. a very timeless... It's a very timeless story in both what goes on at surface level as well as the deeper themes. The, I've And I've been thinking about this so much. Hi, I don't talk about movies a whole lot, which is why I am known as the clueless person. Uh, but I'm very much a storyteller and I, and I approach, uh, talking about any sort of story at, uh, through the lens of a playwright in, uh, what was hammered into me, uh, in, uh, theater and university. Um, Kiki's delivery service is very much about putting your self-worth into what you can do for others. Mm-hmm. The, um, yeah, I, I, like I said, I enjoy that primary theme and I like the fact that there's a moment in this movie that really slows down the pacing. It's just as you're kind of entering the last third where things slow down Yes, and it really lets you take in the character struggle and what's going on. And it's a genuinely nice moment to kind of calm things down before the climax of the film which is basically ghibli hindenburg goes <laughs> into effect that 
amazingly, you pointed out, was completely spoiled in the trailer for the dub. Oh, yeah, the fucking dub. Tra I, I pointed this out to Chloe and Missy the other day that the trailer for the film that played on a lot of Disney VHSs it, the trailer, they just play the climax. It's just the climax of the movie. They spoil the entire last, like, five minutes of the film. Yeah, and adding on to that point, I... additionally, I talked about it when, like, um, the song came up, but the first oh, yeah. time I heard the song Soren in, like, the, the, the song that plays in, like, the English version of it at the beginning... I did not mm -hmm. hear it for the first time in Kiki's delivery service. I heard it on a advertisement on a VHS tape that was I only could find on PAL region VHSs that was for the Rescuers Down Under. The direct VHS sequel to the Rescuers. No, I'm almost certain that it was like actually released in theaters. It was really? released in theaters. Like the, the yeah, the Rescuers Down Under was released in theaters. This was before um, Disney did direct to video sequels. I yeah. always I, I saw it A lot of people I, do I, think I have, that... I have gone I have gone boldly into the beyond uh and <laughs> boldly been wrong. But yeah, that was the first time I ever heard Sword I don't from feel Kiki's bad about delivery it. service. I heard it from fucking seeing an ad for goddamn Rescuers Down Under. Which for so, I'm glad the Rescuers Down Under got a theatrical release because it was worth it. So yeah. something amazing happened to the end in at the end of this film when a certain song played, which I didn't mention during the viewing because I wanted to mention it here because it's kind of this funny moment of closure for one specific aspect of my life, and it's a really dumb aspect of my life. Talk your shit. The so <laughs> the kind of first transparency. The report this has was been updated. The movie we, the version of Kiki we watched was the original release of the English dub, which featured a lot of improv from Phil Hartman. A lot of improv from Phil Hartman. I'll get to that. <laughs> uh huh. Um, but it also featured like it's gonna get to it, everybody. Two original songs for the dub: Soren at the beginning, which Chloe mentioned, and I'm gonna fly. And something amazing happened when I heard I'm gonna fly. Now, Interesting I had heard something amazing happened to me too. So g you first. Now I had heard this song on some Disney VHS way back when. I'm not sure which one. For during the trailer for Kiki's delivery service, I had heard "I'm Gonna Fly," and mm -hmm. it really stuck with me. Now years pass, and I'm listening to the album "The Best of Crush 40." <laughs> And this okay. <laughs> because everything in because everything in my little life comes back to Sonic apparently. Uh -huh. Now, one of the songs on here, which I don't think was made for a Sonic game, I think it was an original track, was called Watch Me Fly. And it always had this familiar vibe to it. And I couldn't mm -hmm. figure out for the life of me what vibe it was. But I was like, this, I was always like, this feels like something that played in some trailer or something I watched a while back. I don't know. That's I disregard awesome. it. I disregard it for years later. Now we watch this movie. We're watching this version of Kiki's Delivery Service I had never seen before. This song plays at the fucking end of the movie, and I'm like, WAIT! <laughs> and it's like everything just came together in an instant. <laughs> With that said, do we want to talk about the different versions of Kiki's dub? I'm sure you do. So... There were two versions of this movie. One was, the, of course, the original English dub, which added, which was, f interesting fact, the first dub Disney ever did for Studio Ghibli. Yeah. Okay. Um, And one is a re-edited I dub. actually find that fascinating, especially uh. since Pat Carroll was in uh, Totoro. Yeah, they kept, they kept Pat Carroll around for her entire life, I swear, so... Um, but anyway, so the biggest difference is that when they did the original dub for Kiki, they had um, Phil Hartman do a lot more ha-ha funny lines that I think were, imp I'm almost certain were improvised during a lot of you, establishing shots that... You compared it to uh, to Robin Williams in Aladdin. Right, I'll get to that in a second. So they added a bunch of improvisation for um, for the cat Gigi. As well as added him talking during one bit in the ending, um, mm -hmm. where 
uh, compared to the original Japanese version, where once he goes silent, he stays silent. Um, the re and they also added they made two songs exclusive to the dub, which we just went over, Soren and Watch, and I'm gonna fly. Um, <laughs> again, I almost confused, I almost confused it for Watch Me Fly. <laughs> like I almost, uh, again suddenly uh, crush forty. Look, if any band's gonna pop into my head randomly, I'm happy it's Crush Forty. <laughs> like. <laughs> If any but band's anyway. gonna pop into Kiki's delivery service, it's Crush mm-hmm. Forty. <laughs> but anyway, uh, the re-edited dub cut out as much of the Phil Hartman improv as as possible, only really keeping the bits where Gigi is supposed to be talking, um, mm. as well as changing the English dubbed songs back to their original Japanese songs. Now, here is the short version of where I stand when comparing these two versions of the dub. Mm-hmm. I like the songs from the original dub. I like the lack of Phil Hartman improv in the new, in the edited dub. Mm-hmm. And here's the thing: I love Phil Hartman. I really do. His it like the sketches he's done on SNL were always classic to me. I will always love his voice work and stuff like The Simpsons. I am I am always going to love Phil Hartman dearly. That said, his character needed to shut the fuck up for a lot of this movie, and it became. Very obvious as I was watching, because I was familiar with a version where this character was restrained, so. And in in all fairness, I do not know this other version. So the version that we watched is the only version that I really cared exists. And I am the third person here who has watched both dubs and controversially, Third prefers person. the uncut Phil Hartman dub. Here's the problem I have with it. I think it ruins some scenes. I think, well, not ruins necessarily. I think it cheapens a few. There's a really good scene where she's doing her first delivery and she flies over the city. And this moment was only accompanied by the music in the original. Insert this one. And Phil Hartman can't stop talking. I honestly disagree uh, with the amount of Phil Hartman and uh, I respect your opinion. Fair. And I respect your guys's too. I just think it cheapens the film and there and it shows it doesn't feel like a creative decision to me. It feels very corporate if I'm being real. Like it is it is an aspect it it added a corporate aspect to this movie that I wanted gone. Okay, <laughs> like, Jazzy, you mentioned one thing in relation to what it cheapened. What else do you feel like is cheapened by Phil Hartman's m- inclusions? The ending, which is kind of the big sticking point for me. Okay. Like Okay, you here's might the want thing. to elaborate it, it is, that is, for people who don't know that much about it potentially. Okay, so for those who D- don't mind being spoiled and haven't seen Kiki's Delivery Service. First of uh, all, quick little stop spoiler spoiler right for a, here. I guess quick little first spoiler of all, for stop like listening a... to the po- stop listening to the podcast and watch Kiki's Delivery Service right fucking now. Like, like there are multiple thing. versions. That's all you need to know. Spoiler alert for um, a near for like an over thirty year old movie at this point. But, okay, so as we enter <laughs> the third act of... in the trailer. Mm-hmm. Now, as we enter the third act of Kiki and um. Like, the character's really doubting herself. Her talking cat, Gigi, is suddenly unable to talk. Or, at the very least, I guess it's more accurate to say is that she can't hear him anymore. Because it's pretty much... Correct. It's pretty that, much that's more or less on it too. explicitly, like, implied that that uh, only Kiki can hear the cat. So... Yes. It is... Um, now... And, may- if and you... maybe the other cat, possibly. But we never right. get confirmation of that. Right. So, now... If you are watching the Japanese version or the more recent, ed- like the edited English dub version that started going on Blu-ray starting in 2010, um, Gigi stays silent for the rest of the movie, even after Kiki like gets through everything she needs to get through. The cat is still silent, and this is just my interpretation. I've always seen the idea that she can no longer hear Gigi as a sign that she's growing up, that she needs independent, that she's finding her independence she's able to make decisions for herself and she's and like and while Gigi will be there for her it's not going to be in the same it's net like from this point on it's not going to be in the same way as he was prior to this point and I think it's actually right. and a I've, rather heard, I've heard I've heard that take too yeah and I think it's a rather strong moment 
Disney not not wanting an inter not wanting to let kids really explore that idea for themselves, like maybe not right away, but maybe as they grow up, decided to have Phil Hartman talk again right at the ass end of the film, right before the credits roll. Cheapens this entire point. I hate it. It's the worst. I'm so it's it's so bad. I'm sorry. Missy and uh, Missy, yes. do you want to take this one? But I I am entirely willing to uh to explain like why I think Gigi talking at the end does not ruin the entire film and I'm not saying it ruins it. the entire film. I'm saying it cheapens the ending. Well <laughs> fair. It uh, for me for me it doesn't cheapen the ending and uh, and I think that comes down to the way that I read Gigi as a character in relation to Kiki. Uh and I I would be willing to to talk about it further if uh if both of you are interested. Talk Go for it. your shit. Okay. The amount what what struck me the most about Gigi as a character and I I do actually think this was a strength of hearing all of hearing all of Phil Hartman having not seen the original having not seen the the original Japanese release because this dub did come after Mm -hmm. it, it is it is its own it is an adaptation of the source material fundamentally um what i really noticed what what started to clue me into uh Gigi and kiki's relationship was after kiki stopped being able to hear him his si uh the silence and not not hearing Phil Hartman randomly every I don't know ten minutes or so. It was noticeable. It was isolating. So I started. I start. I started following that train of thought, and and I'm like, okay, who is who is Gigi? Gigi is Kiki's oldest friend, and. I think it... Gigi is the only person who knows Kiki, and the fact that, and like in in the dub, I'm taking the dub as its own material. I'm making that abundantly clear. Okay. Uh, Kiki does not scold or even react negatively to how annoying Gigi may be. Um. So I'm like, okay, she's used to it. G uh, long story short, I think that Gigi is not just a separate character, but Gigi is in a way a reassuring, possibly cautious voice for Kiki. Um... When Kiki is like so incredibly isolated, she shuts every voice out, and that's when she stops being able to hear Gigi. She doesn't hear Gigi for the rest of, for like the bulk of the of the last third of the movie, in part because she's she's removed herself from that uh, from that environment. She's taking that she she's embracing that change of scenery just like taking away everything that was putting pressure on her giving her space to breathe and recover and find answers to frankly some kind of traumatic things for a 13 year old yeah. uh right. in the film and then end of the film kiki decides to rescue someone who she shut herself off to for pretty much the entire film 
and as such, uh, my read on it is that she is is that she decided to open herself back up to other people, S stuff that she has learned from Ursula. There's no. There's no true independence without companionship. I think that's it's, a, it, it's just isolation at that point. Mm -hmm. I think that's a fair read on the entire thing. Again, I just, I again, I personally think it cheapens the film a bit. I, I but hearing your point, I guess I do kind of get why someone would prefer the other. I just feel like, as kind of. As someone who admires Miyazaki's like strong themes within his work, I feel like yeah. they're like like what was done here kind of cheapens said strong themes. But I will say, I will say right now, mm. I think it cheapens it. I do not think at any point it makes the movie bad because at the end of the day, B tier Kiki's delivery service is still Kiki's, still delivery, Kiki's delivery service. service. I like I, I will definitely. Yeah, you know, I will like, gladly, I this. will gladly take that and drink mm. to you. Mm -hmm. I will definitely say one thing. I feel like Kiki's Delivery Service is one of those movies in Miyazaki's catalog that, like, you can have, like, multiple different reads on how the story, on what the story is. Like, we've heard mm -hmm. Missy's, we've kind of heard yours on it, Jazzy. Honestly, I feel like the ending is sort of, like, a culmination of, like, growing up in adolescence. And, like, I feel like the uncut Phil Hartman dub doesn't cheapen the ending personally, but I feel mm. like it kind of actually kind it, of adds to it in a sense. Cause I will say I Oh, go ahead. Yeah, I was just gonna say that like Gigi stopping talking during all of that could I read that more as like Kiki having like a going through like adolescent depression and just realizing, oh, the world isn't as magical and wonderful as I thought it would be, which is a goddamn real sentiment to have, like as somebody who is nearing her thirties now. And the fact and Chloe, that Chloe, my re my read on it is even different from yours. Yeah, and I feel like Gigi <laughs> starting to talk again, like after Kiki gets her magic back and being able to fly again. That sort of thing, in my opinion, is the idea that maybe Kiki does, will have those bouts from time to time, but instead of letting it consume her entirely, she's able to keep that spark of, like, what makes life so wonderful with her even when she grows up. And to be honest, okay, I feel like that kind of read with the Phil Hartman dub is fucking amazing, to be honest. And that's fair. Uh, okay, so even ignoring the ending and the scene I mentioned earlier, I guess by that point, nothing is cheapened at this point. Then I guess it just comes down to one simple fact of my problem with the uncut Phil Hartman dub. And that is? And this is and this is the that, most subjective that, I can go. And this is very subjective. This is very opinionated. I just don't find it funny. Okay. Valid. That is valid. <laughs> right. There you go. And here's the thing. If I had watched this as a kid, if I had seen this particular dub as a kid... I'd probably, where I didn't have a cynical understanding of movies being made and studios and shit, I'd probably enjoy it fine. But keep in mind, I'm watching this version of the film now, when I am 28 years old, fully aware of how Disney operates as a business, and I was just, it felt like I was seeing the corporate gears turning as I was seeing this, this, this You've improv. also watched so many horrible movies deliberately. Yeah. Fair. <laughs> Fair, fair, fair. I'm just saying, like, look, if I was watching this back before I knew Disney was fucking evil, then maybe I would, then maybe this wouldn't bother me so much. Yeah. But the problem is, I'm watching it now and I'm realizing, oh shit, you're just doing the Robin Williams thing again. Stop! <laughs> like, uh, it's like, I'm me crying out in misery that I can't look at Disney sh shit with the same magic anymore. <laughs> like, I'm right. like, oh, mean stop! Mean meanwhile, here I am every single fucking time I watch Kiki's uncut Phil Hartman dub, and I'm just like, ha ha, uh, funny cat keeps talking. Funny cat go burf. <laughs> yes. <laughs> no, it's like, again, it's just, it I just doesn't... I don't think we should go this way. <laughs> <laughs> In fairness, there was still a bunch of the improv kept within the um in the re-edited dub, mainly in the stuff that Gigi is talking, and they really couldn't replace it on account of that the actor was unfortunately long dead by that point. So yeah, there's still there is mm -hmm. improv still there in the re in the edited dub, 
And like I said, when it's restrained, I like it fine. Like, there is some genuinely funny lines. My One of my favorites yeah. is always, your broom is nice, but let's use your mother's. Yes. But, like, I think that is a genuinely funny line. I think when it fits within points where Gigi is talking, it's not so bad. My problem is is when it's inserted in shots where the cat is clearly not fucking talking. Yeah. <laughs> Kiki's yeah. delivery service is a very subjective movie mm -hmm. which, which uh i i think to its i think uh having multiple versions works to its credit where you can find the version that you like the most right and that's that's the case with a few ghibli films where there's different versions of each of these movies and we'll talk about them as we go but we haven't even mentioned stuff like how totoro and castle in the sky and i believe kiki as well all had dubs in the 80s by streamline the same people that did the original 80s Akira dub, my favorite. Really? Wait, what? <laughs> Not sarcastically says my favorite. Yeah, they did dubs of all these Ghibli films, apparently. They're they're hard to find nowadays just because Disney have pretty much taken it over. And there's no and aside from Grave of the Fireflies, none of these movies have options to listen to di to, to alternate dubs. Holy shit. Yeah, so it it's so wi it's so wild. Um it thank it's mainly a lot of the older ones though there is a more i want to say modern but this the fi the film in question came out a while ago where there were two different dubs but we'll get to that one when we get to it because i find the the particular one i'm hinting at the most fascinating oh god the foreshadowing but um no it's it's funny like yeah there's always alternate dubs of ghibli stuff like even if it's hard to even if like for a lot of it, it's hard to find. There were streamlined dubs of Castle... Of, like I said, there are streamlined dubs of Castle in the Sky, Totoro, and I think Kiki. I could be wrong about that last one, but... Mm. But yeah, no, it, and it's, it is it is funny knowing that there's these different versions and ultimately people are going to... Like, I, I feel like with anything, people are going to prefer one version over the other. As someone who's a fan of Sailor Moon, I am... A, I am very aware of differing opinions on different English dubs. <laughs> Hell, I'm I not. I'm... I feel like di different. I feel like being a fan of Sailor Moon is just like that on hard mode. No, 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 no. From what I can tell, that's the case for Dragon Ball Z, where it has a shit ton of dubs. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, I guess. Given the fact that you still think Castle in the Sky is, like, pretty well up there, and, like, both me and Missy think that Kiki is, like, at the top, I guess podcast ranking goes Grave, Nasca, bottom to top, Grave, Nasca, Castle in the Sky, Totoro, and Kiki's Delivery Service. It's very funny how my own personal ranking is starting to really differ from this, from the actual podcast one. I mean, what is the next I, I don't one that we're going to I don't get think to? it... Only Yesterday, which I'm going to tell you right now, Only Yesterday is going to be at the top for me. <laughs> like, <laughs> Oh boy, okay, so... Okay, that's the Wait, next didn't one. didn't say you hate it? What? I love, 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 love Only Yesterday. The... I seem to recall when we started this, there were two movies that that completely polarized the two of you. Neither of them are ones that I'd seen. One of them's Only Yesterday, I know that, because, Chloe, we'll have to go into this later, but you don't like Only Yesterday, do you? <laughs> I mean, the only time, I mean, the last two times that I've watched it, I didn't really enjoy it all that much. It may change when we do this rewatch, to be honest. Mm -hmm. and, and what was the other one that we were polarized on? I forget. It it was it was like only yesterday, except Chloe loved it and you hated it. Oh, Chloe, do you love ocean waves? <laughs> no. Okay, good. I was gonna say, oh, that's gonna be a hostile <laughs> one if that was the case, because I fucking hate ocean waves. <laughs> I don't know. I'm trying to think. What was one you like? Okay, I'm trying to think of the Studio Ghibli films I don't like. There's Tales from Earthsea. Uh, there's Pompoko I don't like at all. <laughs> like, Which, I think Pompoko might be the one... I was expecting that one to be maybe the differing one, because I see split-ass opinions on Pompoko. 
I don't remember if I'm being honest. Is there even Was a second one? Was it Poppy Hill? I like, I like From Up on Poppy Hill. Like, yeah, I don't think like, it's I don't great. Think, I don't think unless we get to it down the line and then you're proven right, Missy, I don't think we've talked about a Ghibli movie before starting this all up and going, oh yeah, when we get to this, I fucking love this. And Jazzy was just like, oh, I fucking hate that one. No, no, I don't. Here's the thing. I generally like most of the Ghibli films, and the ones I dislike tend to be the ones other people dislike. It's a pretty simple. It's one of the few times where I tend to generally agree with most people. I think the only one Did I accidentally polarizing... pit my friends against each other? <laughs> Missy, what are you doing to us? God damn it. Like, we were just. I was, it was like I was navigating a minefield. It's like, okay, which of these fucking movies are we going to go at each other's throats. So I was going to say, if it was Ocean Waves, I was kind of hoping it'd be Ocean Waves because it's like, I hate that piece of shit and I was kind of hoping you liked it, Chloe, so that uh, I could figure out what... See, here's the thing. I can't remember if I have watched Ocean Waves. It's going to be one of those new ones, probably. But I know, <laughs> I know, one, I know 100% the only one that we were ever going to have differing opinions on, potentially, was only yesterday. And guess what? That's going to be next podcast. So, like, either we're going to go head-to-head, -head, Jazzy, or I'm going to start the next podcast by saying I was wrong about only yesterday, because I made that fucking promise when we started this. Uh, I really hope you end up changing your tune on Only Yesterday, because I will say right now, I think it's a very underappreciated entry in the Ghibli filmography, so. Uh, I guess we'll find out about that when we get to the next podcast, I guess. You'll this find is what out happens when, we, when You'll I find speak. out when we start recording next podcast, that's all I'm gonna say. Like, I'm trying to think of even Ghibli films that I like but don't love, and I guess under those, uh, I'm not as into Porco Rosso, I guess, as other people, but... <laughs> And then I like I mean, it. <laughs> I mean, I really love Porco Rosso, but I don't think I'd debate you on that. Right, right. No, uh, I have a weird opinion on Porco Rosso, but we'll get to that when we get to that. So, and even then, even with movies where I don't necessarily share the same love for it, I fully admit my opinions are fucking weird. So I'm not even going to fiercely defend them, if that makes sense. This is what happens when they let me speak. <laughs> Yeah, All they, let me, they let me out of the cage for one podcast, and uh, I have them going at each other. <laughs> it's uh, like which of these movies? Which, it. Which, which of these movies is gonna ruin our friendship faster than a game of Mario Party? Hmm. <laughs> Although I, w that's a, that's a low bar. Mario Party games take a while. <laughs> look, look, Missy. I just wanted to let you know there is a possibility in the future. Like, that we'll not play Mario Party together. <laughs> Probably because um I like I I'm looking into the possi depending on how laws and government shit goes, it might be sooner rather than later, but I'm definitely planning it for long term. I'm probably gonna be thinking of moving to the East Coast like in the far future. So Oh shit. Oh, shit. Yeah, yeah. It's uh I I'm not gonna go into details because it's kind of just a hypothetical, but that's, that's fair. Uh, and also not so something you would really obvious... want to bring up on a podcast like this. Right, right. But still, You're fair. Gang. Wild. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, yeah. no, no. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Censor yeah. out any mentions of where anyone's located. <laughs> fair. I or I kind of already do that. <laughs> Although I will Even, say, you say about um fucking saying this is what happens when I speak on a podcast, Missy. This is yes. what happens when I speak on the podcast. Have you ever realized that Cyber Chase is just Digimon Adventure 02, but with math problems instead of digital monsters? I've never what seen in... Digimon. What in the holy name of shit is Cyber Chase? <laughs> oh! oh, God, that's <laughs> two Cyber different Chase responses I did. It's not coming. <laughs> Wait, Missy, Cyber you, Chase... never... you never watched uh... Digimon? <laughs> You've, You've never, never watched, watched Cyber, Cyber Chase? Chase? There we I, go. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Hold on. Hold on. No, no, no. I've seen... There was a Cyber... Ch I did see a Cyber Chase. It was a Scooby-Doo movie. <laughs> like... We were fucking like, it was talking the one about where... Cyber Chase a year ago on the podcast. We were? <laughs> yes. Yes. It was the one where okay. I fucking fought Mr. that Christopher Lloyd. Christopher Lloyd had died. Right. Oh yeah, oh yeah, that, yes. so that was a, that was a good time. But yeah, no, the only cyber chase I've seen <laughs> is the, it was a good is, time when we thought Christopher Lloyd died. 
<laughs> uh, the only cyber chase I've seen was the Scooby Doo movie where the sparkly monster man laughs a lot. <laughs> That's okay. spindly so Johnny. Have seen the PBS yes. show? Yeah. Okay, so you haven't seen the PBS show with fucking. I'm so glad you got the Kid Icarus reference. Yes, I did. I was about to say after Chloe was done speaking, I was like, first of all, Missy, great <laughs> reference. I appreciate it. So... <laughs> Yes, yeah, Spindly Johnny. <laughs> oh, Spindly Johnny, run for your life! I cannot look at that character anymore without immediately- Calling him Spindly Johnny? <laughs> right, that's just his yep. name. He's not the Phantom Virus, he's he's Spindly Johnny. He's Spindly like, Johnny. <laughs> like, no, 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 it's- that movie's fucking wild, because, like- <laughs> It's it's one of the most it's one of the coolest movies conceptually, but kind of really boring in execution when it comes to Scooby Doo films. It's the, I'll say it: it's the fucking lamest of that quadrilogy of movies. From like that it whole is. run, that whole run from Zombie Island to Cyber Chase, it's the lamest of the entire bunch. It is like it's just it's so it's so dull. Like uh, Cyber Ch Cyber Chase was uh, had Gilbert Gottfried as a robot bird. Wait, the movie or the show? The show. The show. I was like, I don't remember Gilbert Gottfried in Scooby Doo and the Cyber Chase. <laughs> no. You wouldn't. No, no. I was gonna say, this. Oh, now I get to feel like a dumbass for not knowing. This. Okay, the whole point that I was making was that, like, okay, so you have a trio in, like, both of them that are basically able to zap in and out from the real world into the digital world, you have... It was Hacker is basically the Digimon Emperor. Huh. I, I, I don't know who these characters in sci the Cyber Chase side of things are, but I'm just gonna nod along and act like I know. <laughs> Look, Man. I'm the intersecting point right... I'm the intersecting point right here. Ah, oh, fuck. Look, I'm just gonna do something here real quick. So, this is the trio between both of them that I'm talking about right now. Why does the middle girl have a Steven Universe shirt? <laughs> God. That, that is Inez, and you will put respect on that name. <laughs> and then... I don't know... Missy, I don't know who these people are. <laughs> Man. And then you have Hacker and the Digimon Emperor, like, right here. You tell me it's not just the same thing. Look, the Digimon Emperor does not have Hacker's uh, crimson chin right here, so... <laughs> God, the Hacker is just peak character design, and you will not convince me otherwise. Look, I love the fact that his torso takes up, like, 90% of his body. Yes! His head, like, his head takes up, like, 9%, and his uh, his bottom is just the last 1%. <laughs> Chloe, remind... Yes? A am, I, am I being delusional, uh, remembering... An episode where, like, that where um, the hacker got buff, and it no, was no, you're not delusional. I downloaded all the fucking cartoon episodes last night for my Plex. There, it's there. <laughs> nice. Just, just watch. They're going to indoctrinate, but before the next podcast, they're going to indoctrinate me into this weird cyber chase shit. <laughs> like, look, I feel like I'm going to have to indoctrinate Missy into Digimon at this rate. <laughs> I mean, if you guys are going to watch Digimon, I want to join in on that, so... Man, remember... Remember the hot skater dude that both of the girls liked, and and his father was played by Tony Hawk? Oh my god, I think I remember that one. Friggin' Slider. This... Oh my god! Wait! This sounds like the most 2000s ass series ever. How, it how is. did I so know what? It is, it is and the it most was 2000... the shit. This is on PBS. Like yes, this 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 was on Maddox this was on this was on PBS at five PM Eastern time. That's probably why I never saw it. I was watching SpongeBob at that uh, point. <laughs> it was either five or five thirty. No, it's just it, it, yeah, yeah, it's just <laughs> it, it was somewhere in in that five o'clock hour slot. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, Cyber Chase was so 2000. It was 2D animation, and, uh, and, like, the knowledgeable brain system that the villain was trying to attack all the time was 3D polygons. 
So was it like an entertainment show type deal? Yes. Is what I'm guessing. Yes, it was. Okay. It was math. It was math. Oh, okay. That's why I said it's basically Digimon Adventure 2, but with math puzzles instead of digital monsters. See, see my source of edutainment around the time that this was on was more was probably just playing uh, humongous entertainment games on the PC. So wild. <laughs> like. Did y'all ever play any of those games? Like, yes. No, I did not. Like, Putt-Putt, uh, Freddy Fish, uh, Sam. Pajama Sam, Spy Fox. Okay, I've heard of Pajama Sam. I've not ever played it. I'm going to, like, do a stream of Pajama Sam just for you to experience it. I think it you're going to say, I'm going to lose my shit. <laughs> <laughs> no, look, 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 there are things I lose my shit over people not seeing, like, Pajama Sam admittedly takes up a certain niche that it's like, I get that people probably haven't heard of this kid or played any of his games, so. Uh, what I'm figuring out on this podcast right now is that we all had really different childhoods, and that's both really great, but well, also yes. it makes for funny content where we both just go, where we all just go like, wait, what the fuck, you've never heard of this? Yeah. No, no, it's funny, like, um, so this was, like, the 2000s, this, like, this I mean, aired during the... we've all lost our shit when, uh, when others have heard of things. Uh, like, friggin', um... I never watched Putin a lot Stein. from... Yeah. Oh, yeah. I never watched much from PBS. The only thing I, I remember from PBS specifically that was exclusive to it... I remember there was this show with a cat... I don't remember the details. I just remembered a cat existed. Dagwa? I don't know. <laughs> it the was Siamese like cat? Yes, I think it was a Siamese cat. Like Yeah, that was Dagwa. Okay, thank you. I'm glad I didn't hallucinate that. <laughs> no, yeah. That was that was also PBS, yeah. That was much earlier in the day. Mm -hmm. No, like it, it, I didn't watch a lot of PBS shows like at, at that point in my life, in the 2000s. Like during the 2000s, once once I had a GameCube, that kind of took over all my entertainment. And in terms of TV, I was watching mainly Nickelodeon and uh, Cartoon Network. So that's fair. The bulk of my childhood was uh, PBS, Animal Planet, and Discovery Channel. That is vastly different. <laughs> Meanwhile, oh yeah, because of how like, I um, I I went. To I went seamlessly from Bill Nye the Science Guy to Mythbusters. <laughs> God That's damn. rad. Meanwhile, because of how eclectic channels are here in Australia, we had imports coming in from, like, the US, the UK, fucking You got France. freaking Liberties kids, and I don't understand why. <laughs> yeah, see, that's the fit. Yeah, it's just like, there was a lot of PBS stuff that aired over here in Australia. I don't get why, but it was just a thing. Like, we had fucking Arthur, Cyber Chase, Liberty's Kids, that type of shit. And we also did have stuff like Tuttenstein as well. And, like, I, I vividly remember it's Clash of the Titan. Class of the Titans. That's what it was. Class yeah, of I, the Titans. Let's go. Um, when it came to imports, a lot of shows were imported. Um, Cartoon Network was the network that usually had a lot of the imports. Like, I remember Code Lyoko imported from France. Right, uh, yeah. Um... Total drama imported from Canada. Uh, um, did you ever watch um, H2O or Just Add Water? No. What? What? What's that? That's an Australian. You're import. ringing a very dim bell for me, Chloe. That is an Australian import. It was about a bunch of girls that lived on the Gold Coast that developed the ability to turn into mermaids when they get in contact with water. That's Yo, what the awesome. fuck? That sounds amazing. Yeah. Hang on. I'm looking it up now. Yeah, H2O just had what Australian Australian kids television show. Yeah, oh. yeah. Round the twist is also a thing as well. It was based upon a series of books by Paul Jennings, an Australian author. Wild. Oh. Yeah. Apparently, it aired on Nickelodeon in the U.S. I don't. Hmm. I don't remember it. Like this, it is possible that they imported it around the time I stopped watching. Because if we're talking late two thousands, then that's where you're gonna start um, losing was, me a bit. It was late nineties, actually. Huh. Okay. Hmm. Uh. Yeah. No. The, a lot of these. A lot of. It seems I kind of didn't get a chance to see any Australian imports. <laughs> like, yeah. On, 
sounds about right, given the fact that a lot of Australian imports kind of didn't really break a lot of ground in the US, because they're just like, oh, this is too weird, even for us. Uh, uh, but yeah, no, in like... 2015, uh, an animated spinoff targeted to children premiered on Netflix, titled H2O Mermaid Adventures. Uh, there's also but, Maker of Mermaids, which is the natural sequel series to it. Yeah, if there were imports like that, I was that that came to some, to a network that were given the most attention. Most of the time, it was Canadian shows, just because those were that, pretty that easy makes imports. Way too much sense, like, in all honesty. <laughs> right, right. But I also remember a lot of the censorship that was added to stuff like Total Drama was genuinely funny. Like, ah, <laughs> uh, yeah, you got like the censored version in in the U.S. We got like the uncensored. You all talked here. about this on the podcast before. We have. Yeah. We have, didn't we? Dang. We've talked a lot. We've talked about a lot of stuff in the near three years we've done this podcast. Mm hmm. I'm sorry, three. And yeah, no, actually, you, wait, you, no, you, I you must, you must it's be only mistaken. It's been two years. I thought we started <laughs> in 2021. You must be mistaken. Hang on. I'm looking up your YouTube channel, Chloe Sunflora VA, right now. Yeah, I'm dumb. We started doing this in 2022 because. Fuck. So, I found out some time ago that in terms of Canadian import shows, like, another one from the same team as Total Drama was uh, 16. It was their first series. Oh, like, God, yeah. But, it, but but it was the second one we got in the States, which was wild, so. um, But that one had to be censored more because there was a lot of content that was considered more inappropriate, I guess. I guess there was an episode where there was a twist where a character was gay, and they just omitted that episode from the U.S. run entirely, which <sighs> fucked me. See, I thought for some reason the team behind both were also the reason why we got My Life Me, which is just 16, but for weebs. Okay, Chloe, first episode, Chaotically Queer Podcast, episode one, Top or Panty and Stockings. Yep. What went, uh, went up on YouTube on August 24th, 2022. Yeah, I was just like, wait, what, what the fuck? Why am I saying we've been doing this for three years? <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. This will be the 12th episode. Ah, we're uh, finally about as long as a uh, short form anime, so uh, we have we have it, made we it 12 one. episodes and not completely destructed the podcast. Amazing. <laughs> There's just some shorter anime I should watch for the sake of and go back to and check out again, just for the sake of having something to talk about on these things. Like, I've had a desire to go rewatch Angel Beats recently. Oh, Angel <laughs> Beats is re Angel Beats is great. It's like a top. It's like top Angel ten personally. Yeah, no, Angel Beats and Clannad were like two big anime I watched a like religiously mm -hmm. back in high school. I. Clannad and Clannad After Story were kind were among my first my God, I have a story to tell about after story <laughs> I have an after story to tell about st go on <laughs> so I watched Clannad and Clannad after story pretty early in high school and I remember um one day one night I was getting ready to go to my high school's homecoming I think this is around sophomore year okay um, as I was getting ready, I, I had been watching these episodes because they had been all on Netflix at the time. Um, and I decide, and I decided, okay, I'll watch one more for the night. The episode I ended up watching was in Clannad After Story that I ended up watching right before I had to go have fun with my friends and be happy was, spoiler alert for Clannad After Story, by the way. The one where Nagisa dies? Yes, the one where Nagisa fucking dies. Oh, Let's white darkness. Fucking go. Yeah. Okay. Fun fact about that episode. Fun fact about that episode. <laughs> the director of that episode would later go on to fully direct Kaon. Nice. That makes sense. Yeah, from what I'm the aware fucking of sad episode when Nagisa dies. The director of that one goes on to make the fucking show with like cute girls doing cute shit and making the Moe blob anime genre fucking boom. Jeez. Uh, yeah, no, no, no. It had it's to be that episode. Range. But no, like maybe I'll maybe I'll take some time to rewatch Angel Beats at the very least so I can because I haven't seen it in a while and I remember it being very very good. So it is. You want a twelve good. episode series that is 
really good. I actually have two. Yeah. Uh huh. One is Achi Kochi. Never heard which of it. Which I. It is, in my opinion, required viewing. It mm. is the most wonderful slice of life. Think, uh. All right, this is going to be a really weird endorsement, but bear with me, okay? Uh-huh. Um, Lucky Star, but sane. <laughs> that sounds wild. Um, I love Lucky Star, though, so, hmm. It's okay. really, really good. Okay, but if you want Lucky Star, but even more insane, then you get Nichijar. I've heard of Nichijar. Yes! I... <laughs> I've heard of Nietzsche Joe. I did a. I helped with my friend's cover of the opening of Nietzsche Joe back in the day. So, God damn. Uh, the other one that I highly recommend is uh called uh GJ Club or Good Job Club. Hmm. Which is keep... a bit a bit lesser known. I ha I like accidented my way across it. Back when I, back when Crunchyroll roll was free with ads, um, <laughs> uh, back in my day, uh, I happened my way while going through like slice of life series, uh, and I happened my way into Good Job Club. And it's a series that you'd think would be more etchy than it actually is, and when it does, like dip a toe into ecchi it's really funny there's n there's nothing that's like over that it's not overt it's not like the most innuendo you get is that the uh, like the central male character who the story follows Gives like transcendently, tra transcendently good hair brushing, and it's hilarious. Hmm. Interesting. That's not even the central focus of the show. So on the off chance that it shows up, like it gets you invested. <laughs> Damn. No, uh, Achi Kochi and GJ Club are. My absolute favorites. I'm I need sure. to watch more anime as well. I left yeah, off I just, like two thirds of the way through uh, Adachi and Shimomura as well. I just realized that I that I own home media copies of all the key anime from like Canon to Angel Beats, like on some <laughs> form of home media. Like I uh -huh. have I have Canon and Air on DVD, and I have both Clonad and Angel Beats on Blu-ray. So. <laughs> Oh, uh, I think I need. I could go off on my physical media collection, but I think it would be better if I just show a show of like a photo of it, because I got I should, I, lots. I, I do fucking, too. Cl Chloe's Chloe's collection is the anime equivalent of Space Jam DVD. Space Jam DVD. Space Jam DVD. Space Jam look, DVD. Look, I have a pretty Space Jam DVD. Look, not to brag, but I have a pretty extensive collection of Blu-rays and DVDs myself. So not not to brag, I'm a bit of a collector myself. <laughs> Fuck off! <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! And yet, to I burp. This day, That's what I, I have to say. And yet, to uh -huh. and yet, to, and yet, to this day, I am still collecting DVDs and Blu-rays of like physical media. Like, I spotted a fucking class of three thousand DVD, and I was just like, "That's a fucking three thousand? Yeah. We had a bunch oh. of like Cartoon Network series that were on that were released on DVD here before they ever had physical media releases in in the U.S. Like we, oh! got up, we got up to season three of Foster's Home for Imaginary Friends before the complete series collection came out a few years ago. God nice. damn! Yeah, so um, like, and, and the class of three thousand DVD was going for like eight bucks. So I'm like, fuck that! I'm fucking snagging that shit. Do it, yeah. No, um, in terms of obscure series on Cartoon I, Network, I don't um, know what you're talking about, but I'm proud of you. I don't know class of three thousand. I do know Foster's. I, I know Foster's too. Foster's was one of the Foster uh, very relative. Foster's was the show that Audrey 3000 did for the Cartoon Network. Oh my Underra god. Underrated as fuck, in my opinion. Like, um, but 
I, I have to ask, in terms of Cartoon Network shows, I just remembered one that's kind of an interesting breed, and I can't remember if I ever brought it, brought it up on the podcast before. Have either of you ever seen Duel Masters? Yes. Which I've was heard ba- of Duel Masters. With, with a dub that was basically ghost stories for children. <sighs> Wait, really? <laughs> yes, it had an English dub that was just like pop culture references and dumb shit. It was the best. Oh my god, I vaguely remember that dub. I vaguely yeah, remember yeah. that dub. Yeah, yeah, no, it was basically a friendly a family friendly ghost stories is what it was. And the reason why they did that, family I don't know. Fr- was- is that even ghost stories at that point? Exactly. But anyway. <laughs> <laughs> um so I think the reason so it was pretty much a gag dub. It was more com- like the dub was more comedic than the original version. And I think the reason they did that is because they wanted something to kind of give themselves their own identity in uh in the card game anime space that Yu-Gi-Oh! was dominating at the time. And Not the so is, fast, the card you, game if you're hard, in... then you hard. And the thing is that um, Duel Masters was basically just um, Magic the Gathering, but for kids. Yeah, it was, what? it was, fu- no, it was funny when my, like, years, it was funny because when I was in my college years and my friends were teaching me how to play Magic, that, like, I realized it was basically Duel Masters, which I had learned how to play back when this show was a big deal. So I was like, oh, I could get into this. Slowly turns around and looks straight at my thousands of dollars collection of Magic the Gathering. Accumulated over the course of, oh, (laughs) 16 years. Jesus. Badass. But yeah, no, it was that, that... I don't know if the dub's humor would hold up pretty well to today, because I remember it was very reliant on pop culture references of the time, especially, so... Oh, so, dated humor is the best humor to laugh at. Oh, that yeah. is true. That, uh, th- though, admittedly, as someone who grew up in that era, I would probably just get a huge laugh out of it. And I love the fact, one of the best running jokes I remember is that they had these two... Is that anytime there was a big duel in an arena, they had these two random assholes doing color commentary that talked like sportscasters and it was dumb and I loved uh. it. <laughs> Wild. Actually, I think you could define most of my tastes with it was dumb and I love it. <laughs> How, you should have seen me during um the stream on Anthony's channel when we were doing the Snyder ranking. That was pretty much me with Sucker Punch the entire time. It's like, oh, it's dumb and I, I love it. I watched that entire stream. I hope you enjoyed me going on about how the Owl movie is actually really good and that the and that Sucker Punch is the best, so. Yeah. And me having no idea what fucking his of the dead movies were. <laughs> or what the hell a rebel moon is. Hmm. I still uh. to this day do not know what a rebel moon is. There wasn't, I fe- I was lurking around um, a store the other day and I saw there was a novelization of the first Rebel Moon movie and my first immediately, immediate thought was, okay, but does the novelization have a Snyder Cut? Oh my fucking god. Look, the Snyder Cut has had, just the concept Slowly of the Snyder Cut has had. Next button. <laughs> Look, the concept of a Snyder Cut is just so hilarious that it's just infected pop culture for better and for worse. Like, uh, I mostly wish... for I'm... the worse, but... The Snyder I'm, Cut I'm... has effectively ruined director's cuts. It has. I'm not, like, no, I won't deny that at all. Like, I, I, and the thing is, I like director's cuts. Here's the thing. I, I like seeing what wasn't put in theaters i like seeing what something closer to what the director had in mind but now you hear now director's cuts are just an excuse to release half a movie and then release the full version later pretty much the game industry's business model yep oh no thanks zach no don't say it like that no (laughs) no Fucking hell. It's a shame. Like I said, I no. like direct... I used to really like director's cuts, and now they annoy me. Like, <laughs> I, I hope I never... learn movies so thoroughly that I gain that level of cynicism. <laughs> Neither do I, to be honest, but it feels like it'll happen eventually. 
I don't want it to it's happen, just to- I don't even that I that that just happens because like <laughs> direct, sorry like you you cut out so perfectly that you're like I don't eat <laughs> but no like I feel like in order to repair the damage lo- done by the whole concept of Snyder cuts we need something like Lord of the Rings where like the director's cut genuinely becomes this amazing way to watch what was already a great movie hmm. But I highly doubt it's going to happen because Hollywood's business model is just is at this point. And and let's be honest with like indie with yeah. film uh, with film ho- with Hollywood filmmaker. business model. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. If it is broke, don't fix it. Pretty much. Yeah. But like but then you have like folks like like f- f- like uh, individuals who are just kind of making their own films who kind of just don't give a fuck about cutting th- shit out at this point who kind of just release their movies as is what you get in theaters is what the director wants and you know i find that nice i prefer that now i respect it like you know people bitch about how long of a movie something like killers of the flower moon was but i and while yes i found the length a bit unbearable i was kind of sitting there at the end thinking hey at least he got to release his movie the way he wanted it i'm happy for him (laughs) yeah I have no idea what you're talking about, but I appreciate it. Also, it's a Scorsese holy, film. Also, holy okay. shit, we've, we've been going on for over an hour at this point. <laughs> Listen, it's a, it's episode 12. Let us live a little. <laughs> it's the special surpri- episode 12. I'm surprised that like y'all haven't been all like, hey, we should wrap this up soon. There's never been I, a good place to wrap it up. <laughs> I like I like talking. <laughs> I like talking with my friends. Finally, someone let me out of my cage. Oh, no. I can't wait to talk about only yesterday. If I... <laughs> oh, boy. Uh, we'll only me. be able to talk about it yesterday. Dang. So what you are you all up there? To? Uh, well... I find it funny that we recorded this on May the 4th and we didn't really do any have any Star Wars discussions. Is there really anything to talk about Star Wars wise? No, no, there isn't. I uh, that's depressing. I prefer Picard, <laughs> moving on. <laughs> um I guess the main thing that I'm gonna be working on is um I've got um a very I've got, uh, this, well, the reason why I brought up k in this video is because my next video is actually going to be talking about k I'm going to be doing an in-transition on k That should be coming out. Does I, this podcast come before, will it come out before k comes out? Yes, this is definitely going to come out because I haven't even done the recordings for it yet. Because okay. I, I was meant to do it this week, but I've been down with RSV this for like two weeks. Uh, as far as what I'm going to do, sickness. yeah, yeah and I hope you feel better. Just myself up. See you. Bye. <laughs> God damn it, Missy. Anyway, what I'm going to do, uh, I'm probably going to go through on that plan to watch it, to rewatch all of Angel Beats, because that sounds fun. Uh, nice. I do have a stream the day after we're recording this, um, another I.I. watch stream, which, fun times. We're finally on the season that I'm in. So. Hell yeah, let's go. Prepare uh, to cringe at your own work. I like to think I'm not that horrible to myself that I cringe at every line I record, but... Get it. <laughs> um, keep, keep, keep that mindset. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, other than that, I might do some game streams. I'm going to be working with a new setup, probably going to start... And I'm going to start streaming with what this conversation started all started with, a stream of the original Sonic Adventure. Hey, yo, let's go. I was going to be like, Kingdom Hearts? Uh, yeah, it's gonna be, it's gonna be like the Kingdom Hearts streams, I guess, like, which I should, once, once, once Shakira and I can get it going, we're definitely going to get back to those, I know for a fact, so. When Birth by Sleep. When Birth by Sleep, Jazzy. At Birth by Sleep, the best. When Birth by Sleep. The best, the best. Like, I don't think it's my absolute favorite, but it's definitely one of the best. (laughs) You didn't answer the question. When birth by sleep? <laughs> Why are we... it cut out for a bit? So suddenly Chloe just popped in, going by sleep. When birth by sleep? Where'd you all go? 
What? I'm alone. Ah, Hello? Why did it- it went silent for a bit, and I was like, where am I? <laughs> Hello, I'm just gonna darkness, keep on screaming, when birth friend. by sleep, Jazzy, when birth by sleep! I'll get to it, Chloe! Fucking better! <laughs> So, I have been, uh, on top of voice acting work, I have been streaming as a VTuber and making digital art and playing video games on Twitch, and recently, I've been, uh, editing my own highlights to upload to YouTube as YouTube Shorts, and it's been a ride. A lot of new stuff, and I dare say I'm improving with every single one, which can only be good news. Also, you can find Chloe at Chloe Sunflora VA on Twitter, Jazzy at Lady Jazzington on Twitter, and me, Missy, at Mystic Genesis on Twitter. Now back to the end of the episode. Finally, someone let me out of my cage. <laughs> <laughs> Missy, you had a. This is going to be funny, but you, you know what? actor's tone you had when you said finally let me out of my cage <laughs> which actor nicholas cage <laughs> that kind of a nicholas cage going someone let me out of my cage oh dearie oh dearie me oh my god anyway that's been the podcast everyone thank you all for watching and listening and doing all the things if you liked it like it share it just comment around uh fucking whatever <laughs> Don't Chloe. worry about what I'm doing. <laughs> Wait, Missy, what are you doing? Missy, back! 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 Ah! <laughs> and on that note, we'll catch you next time. <laughs> Boy! Send help! <laughs>